Good morning, Hunter. I should be writing, but I'm having trouble with believing. No, I mean like the concept of belief. Belief is one of the few evolutionary curiosities possessed by Homo sapiens that allowed us to become the predominant version of early humans. You all know what Harari says in Sapiens, that you can never convince a monkey to give you a banana by promising him limitless bananas after death in monkey heaven. Belief is one of the most defining human characteristics and almost single-handedly separates us from the rest of nature. Our ability to lie creatively, create imagined orders like religion and government systems is beyond the scope of other animals on Earth, or the universe for that matter. Take that, elephants. Now that's a truth, but belief and truth are not mutually inclusive. Belief, like beauty, is in the eye of the beholder. And therefore, belief can be whatever you want it to be. And that's a sticky wicket for objective truth. In ancient Greece, when an eclipse occurred, it was indicative of an angry god punishing and abandoning his creation. In ancient China, they believed an eclipse was the work of a great dragon eating the moon and sun respectively. And in both instances, they were correct. That was their belief. There's no prosecutorial ramifications. But that's not always the case with belief. It's not even always the case with truth. Joan of Arc was famously burned at the stake for charges of heresy, for her belief of divine vocation, while Galileo was persecuted not for a scandalous belief, but rather for championing the empirical truth of Copernican heliocentrism. In fact, in that example, it's the power structure of beliefs that persecuted observable truth, as his house arrest was sanctioned and enforced by the Roman Catholic Church. Mamma mia! One needn't look back at the 14th century to find oxymoronic tendencies within the truth-belief dichotomy. I mean, bringing it back to modern times, our entire civilization is built upon the back of subjective beliefs held together by the glue of community. We agree that this piece of paper is worth the amount written on it. We stop at red lights because societally we agree that red means stop. These are beliefs transformed into truths, but more on that in a minute. Every election cycle, we're reminded that voters are willing to vote against their own economic and civil best interests largely because politicians are effective in their ability to appeal to their sense of faith and belief in those values. From rural white voters living in financially emaciated communities, continuing to elect politicians whose policies have failed them, to disenfranchised minority communities who vote more conservatively because of the party's front-facing commitment to family values. Can we get dark for a moment? As if talking politics and burning at the stake isn't dark enough. Voltaire famously said, There is uh, no God, but don't tell my servants that, lest he murder me in the night. First off, your real name is Francois, and to be candid, you sound like a bougie asshole. But secondly, his larger point is one worth taking note of. Many are governed by their beliefs over any discernible truth. In this instance, the servants kept in check by fear that they'll be punished, or worse yet, lose their chance at divine reward under their belief of Judeo-Christian teachings. And to quote Russ Cole, if the only thing keeping a person decent is the expectation of divine reward, then brother, that person is a piece of shit. But obviously not everyone believes religiously. Secularism is at an all-time high, and yet the global murder rate, with homicides amounting to only 1% of global deaths each year, continues to fall. Which suggests to me that personal ethics are just as responsible for this than any fear of an angry god. Though, interestingly enough, most religions, if not all, adhere to a foundational belief that killing is inherently wrong. And in this instance, like the value of money or stoplights, it seems like a belief that's been codified into a civilizational truth. But to continue being dark, just as many wars have been started and lives taken under the auspices of belief, from crusades to jihads to holocaust, all were powered by the gasoline of belief. And sure, we can say, objectively, those beliefs don't hold any actual basis in truth, but the fact remains, it's a truth that millions died as a result of those beliefs. Is this too depressing? Hey bro, watch your jet. Watch your jet, bro, watch your jet! Let's redeem belief. Belief can be weaponized for good, often in tandem with truth. For example, our childhoods are populated with worlds of mythical creatures and legends, superheroes, Santa Claus, the Easter Bunny. Then one by one, we dismantle extraordinary beliefs and replace them with truths. Santa teaches kids about morality, about being kind and being charitable. It matters little that Santa is alive because the belief inspires and edifies. Superheroes teach perseverance and responsibility, with the majority of obstacles largely being personal and less about the extraordinary. The Easter Bunny teaches... Actually, I have no clue what's going on with the Easter Bunny. The, the Easter Bunny is both horrifying and deeply unsettling. Belief can also be the fuel of accomplishment. In recent election cycles, we've seen Stacey Abrams work tirelessly and flip the state of Georgia for the first time in 28 years, buoyed by nothing more than a determination and belief that hard work can affect real change. But that same energy and belief also energized the Republican base and made Donald Trump not only the president, but in a losing bid for re-election, the second most voted for candidate in American history. 
Our belief is powerful. It changes the world around us. And I hate to do it, but... With great power comes great responsibility. I'll see you next week.